This is an environmental hazards and emergency preparedness lecture. Healthy People 2020 has six environmental health objectives. They include outdoor air quality, surface and groundwater quality, toxic substances and hazardous waste, homes and communities, infrastructure and surveillance, and global, global environmental health. So competencies for nurses with environmental issues is basic knowledge is one of them, understanding the relationship between people and the environment, like the community water source. Assessment is recognizing key environmental problems and providing the appropriate referral for those. So an example is what could contaminate the water source. Advocacy is acting within the role of population advocate. An example is urging water suppliers to test off and ad adhere to EPA guidelines and standards. And then legislation, understanding policies and major pieces of legislation is important, like supporting local and state efforts for programs and education. Some categories, chemicals are vesicant, nerve, blood, or respiratory. An example is the anthrax spores that are inhaled. Um, biological include bacteria, viruses, and toxins like influenza and tuberculosis. There are radiological like radon, radon gas, which is odorless, invisible byproduct of the decay um, of uranium, and it enters buildings through cracks and gaps that are deadly. There's also ultraviolet radiation that's from the sun and causes many types of skin cancer. There is nuclear hazard, like the dirty bombs that are put in and used with explosives. And there's also explosive hazards, and they're the most common. Explosions and propellants are used. So make sure you complete the readings for uh, the exam that talk about these different categories of environmental hazards. So biological and communicable. The first is anthrax. The anthrax outbreak in the United States that occurred during the latter part of 2001 had many of the same characteristics as a typical outbreak. What was different, however, is that there was no transmission from infected to susceptible persons that linked one case with another. Instead, all of the cases were generated by a terrorist or group of terrorists who sent letters containing anthrax spores through the postal system. These spores are very small in size, typically injured the skin or lungs or, um, of the victim when the envelope was handled or opened, and when coming into contact with an environment where envelopes had previously been handled or opened, or when passing through small holes in unopened envelopes. There was also a cryptosporidium outbreak. Um, cryptosporidium parvum is a highly infectious microscopic protozoan that adheres to the small intestines of mammals before reproducing. It's mostly commonly spread through fecal matter and contaminated water supply. In 1993, the largest outbreak of crypto occurred in Milwaukee, leading to investigation of water processing and refinement of the treatment of water supplies nationwide. So epidemics and pandemics occur, but they can be prevented. Environmental protection includes these items listed here. Prevention is the most basic intervention, but it requires continuous teaching. So things like immunizations, STD education, and disaster preparedness. You can also control. So monitoring our community's process for controlling pollution and saving resources. And then environmental standards are control pollution rates. Monitoring includes environmental protection agency standards that are assessed and citizen role, um, informed citizens can create a change. All right, so let's talk about emergency preparedness. These are some of the natural disasters that we, we've seen. The Indian Ocean tsunami that hit the, um, in 2004 was one of the worst to ever happen in the history of this weather phenomenon. According to the U.S. Geological Survey, the tsunami was so strong that it was equal to approximately 23,000 Hiroshima-type atomic bombs. It had a devastating effect on the shoreline, coming upon it like a jet airliner. At the end of the day of destruction, 150,000 people were either dead or missing, along with millions of people who were homeless. 
In all, the tsunami affected the coastlines of 11 different countries traveling over 300 miles. <clears throat> and you don't need to remember the um, different things involved with these natural disasters. I just wanted to bring that up to you for awareness. The next one was Hurricane Katrina. Um, she was a tropical storm that formed off the coast of the Bahamas in August, in August of 2005. When she hit land, it caused, she caused 1,833 deaths and over $81 billion in damage. The devastation of the storm, uh, packing at its height, 175 mile per hour winds, left millions homeless and without a source of income. The individuals hardest hit by the third largest hurricane on U.S. record were located in Mississippi, Louisiana, the Bahamas, and South Florida. At the decrescendo, 53 levee bridges around New Orleans flooded over 80% of the city. The deadliest single tornado was Joplin, Missouri in nearly 60 years um, when it ripped through on Sunday, May 22, 2011. 30% of Joplin was flattened. The EF5 tornado, the highest rating based on inflicted damage by the National Weather Service, was labeled the deadliest single tornado since 1950. The tornado devastated the population town of over 50,000 residents when it carved a path of destruction a mile wide and 22 miles long. This disaster affected over 8,000 structures, including homes, churches, schools, and businesses. The death toll was 124 people with several others injured. There was an Oklahoma tornado. Communities such as Moore, Oklahoma fall, fell victim to severe devastation e each year. Moore has had many severe tornadoes since 1999. The most recent occurred May 20th, 2013, killing 24 people and injuring another approximately 370 individuals. In addition, tracks of homes, cars, properties, hospitals, schools, and businesses were destroyed as a result of this EF5 tornado. The Yarnell Fire on June 28, 2013, when lightning struck and ignited what is now said to be the deadliest fire since 1933. Over 600 firefighters were called in to contain this fire, including hot shot teams, air crews, ground crews, camp crews, and an air tanker. This fire affected the community greatly as 19 firefighters from the Granite Mountain hot shots were killed. This was in Hensley, 2013. The Ladysmith Tornado, the F3 tornado on September 2, 2002, devastated Ladysmith, Wisconsin. The damage was $20.8 million. The tornado destroyed more than 40 buildings and damaged up to 150 others. 37 people were treated for injuries ranging from laceration, lacerations to broken legs at area hospitals. No one was killed. And amazingly enough, my husband and I were just at this time driving down from being up north and we came around the curve just as the tornado had passed through. We were some of the first people on scene to help um, try and find people that were trapped and, and injured and things like that. And then we did most recently have a Merrill tornado as well. So one of the biggest things that we think about with um, emergency responding is the 9-11 terrorist attack. On September 11, 2001, four coordinated Muslim terrorist attacks occurred. They hijacked four passenger airliners and crashed two of them into the World Trade Center towers causing um, the two towers of the WTC employed around 50,000 workers where 40,000 people passed through on any given work day. The third plane was crashed into the Pentagon and the fourth crashed into a field in Pennsylvania. It was on target for Washington, D.C., but passengers overtook the hijackers and it crashed early. Over 3,000 people died in the attacks. There was also the most recent Boston Marathon on April 15, 2013, um, where 23,342 runners had begun the 117th running of the Boston Marathon. Near the finish line, around 2.50 p.m., there were two bombs that exploded. 
there were about 50 to 100 yards apart and went off approximately 8 to 12 seconds apart. As a result of the events that occurred on this day, 144 people were physically injured. These victims of both physical and mental trauma will spend months and years trying to regain their health. There were three tragic deaths that occurred because of the events. One of them was an eight-year-old boy, Martin Richard, who was at the finish line with his family. So disaster plans. Which disasters do you need to be concerned about? Tornadoes? Hurricanes? Terrorists? Do you have any emergency numbers readily available? Hospitals have disaster plan books with staff numbers in them. You should uh, map, map out exit routes for evacuation no matter where you are. You should know those. You should create a disaster supply kit. For home, it's a small kit. For hospitals, it's a large supply. Create communication plans. Stay informed with weather on weather, illness, and terrorist attacks. And then practice, practice, practice. Hospitals hold internal and external drills every year. So these are some community resources that you should be aware of. FEMA provides online training and a response framework. The CDC provides education for emergency preparedness and response. Hospital Incident Command System is a structure and process to follow for hospitals. WHO provides epidemic and pandemic preparedness plans and the Medical Reserve Corps allows you to volunteer to assist. Public health problems. We have death and injuries, destruction of medical resources like hospitals, nursing homes, and pharmacies, disruption of routine health services, medications like insulin and metoprolol, things like that that are needed, environmental hazards like down trees and power lines, psychological and social behavior stressors, a shortage of safe food and water sources, and displaced shelter for many people. So, this is what you can do as a nurse. Educate and inform your community in the pre-disaster stage. Scene security and safety during a disaster. Triage, you should learn the start or the rapid triage. And provide emergency care and first aid for those that need it. And this is the end of our presentation.